Let's get more girls in STEM. How do we get more girls in STEM? The nine best STEM toys for girls in 2020. If you search girls in STEM on Google, you get 450 million hits. And this clearly shows our obsession with getting more girls in STEM. I'm sure from STEM Barbies to coding camps, you guys have seen it all. Getting more girls in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics careers is the right thing to do because STEM needs women and women need STEM. STEM needs a diverse workforce to solve the complex problems that just can't wait. Women also need STEM to get a much deserved seat at the table and to enjoy the social and economic benefits of working in STEM professions. Currently, only 28% women constitute the workforce in STEM jobs in the US. So getting more girls in STEM is urgent and important, but there is only one problem with this solution. And that is the leaking bucket that's waiting for these girls as soon as they join the STEM workforce. Studies show that more than 40% women leave STEM jobs in just five years of starting. So even today, where we are statistically very close to having over 50% women representing representation in the undergraduate STEM degree programs in the US, we still only have 28% women in the actual jobs. So we're getting more girls into a bucket that's leaking and are not really addressing the gender gap in these professions. Which leads me to ask a couple of intriguing questions. What if keeping women in STEM is more important than getting more girls in STEM? And what if there's a way to repair this leaking bucket? As a child, I always wanted to be an engineer. My dad only had two obsessions, Bollywood and making me an engineer. My parents' constant encouragement and my role model, the late astronaut Kalpana Chavala, really paved the path of engineering for me. In 2012, I moved to the US and studied in the same classroom as her. I was fired up, excited, and full of possibilities. After getting my master's in mechanical engineering, I found my dream job in manufacturing. And I was thoroughly enjoying the first three to four years of working in STEM. Until one day, I started feeling a little bit lost. I didn't know where to go from here. I just couldn't visualize the next steps. Even though Kalpana Chavla taught me that no dream is too big as a child, now as an adult, I wanted to meet relatable women who were really succeeding in STEM jobs. But everywhere I looked, I found the same STEM Barbies and the same coding camps. And guess what? Even I joined forces. <laughs> in 2017, I started my podcast, Her STEM Story, to get more girls in STEM. What started as a way to inspire my 14-year-old cousin and many girls like her, surprisingly started motivating me to stay in STEM. Stories like the story of Vishakha Malia, who is a first-generation Indian-American, a computer science engineer, and an LGBTQ advocate, and a professional model, really inspired me to explore my success definition and to believe in my own brilliance. Every week, I was interviewing diverse women with diverse STEM stories. From the CEOs to the science communicators, I somehow found them all. The more women I interviewed, the more I realized that if, if us women want to succeed in STEM, the secret is to find relatable role models. These women that I was interviewing were way more than just women in STEM. They were paving their unique path in STEM careers. So by diversifying the pool of role models for myself, 
I was able to find a solid reason to stay in STEM and share these stories with other women who might be at the edge of leaving. If us women want to succeed in STEM, we also need to just look at the 28% women who have stayed in these professions, understand why they have stayed and how they define success. We need to find people who can show us that no dream is too big, but in a more relatable way. Who can tell us that STEM doesn't define us, but we define STEM. So how do we find these perfect role models as women in STEM? I have some tips for you. And don't worry, you don't need to start a podcast. All you need to do is qualify potential role models and people in your existing circles based on three simple criteria. Number one, connect with women who are just two or three steps ahead of you. One of the biggest mistakes that people make while looking for role models is they directly look up to the CEOs and it can feel unrelatable and overwhelming. The trick is to find women who are only two or three steps ahead. Connect with them on social media and just observe their journey. Their influence is way more powerful than you realize. I find all my guests, almost all my guests, on Instagram, and I recommend you do the same. Just search women in STEM in the search bar and look for women that you can relate to and women who are doing things that you would like to do. Number two, search for the struggles. This is where the magic happens. People who share the same struggles as us can really show us what's possible beyond those struggles and they can give us real insight on how to overcome them. How to pivot seems to be a common struggle for women in STEM. Many of my guests have shared their struggles and inspired listeners to pivot like a pro. Like my guest Brittany Stoneberg, who graduated with a uh, degree in English and then went on a, her way to become a paleontologist. Really inspired my listeners to think beyond what's possible, irrespective of their educational background. And number three, focus on the details. What kills the search for a perfect role model is to try to find them in your profession or your industry. The real trick is to break those rules and look beyond. Look for the commonalities creatively. It's all in the details, but what matters is what details will you focus on? One of my favorite questions to ask on the show is, to find out my guest's favorite book. Learning about someone's favorite book opens a door to their personality and what they might have in common with us. When we share commonalities with someone, it's way easier for us to see ourselves in them. Since finding myself over 100 role models, I have really fallen in love with my STEM career. I'm happy to report that I'm excelling at my nine to five I've grown my podcast and have really defined what success means to me. And I continue to redefine it as I meet more women. When us women in STEM feel continuously successful and inspired in our STEM careers, and we find that through relatable role models, that is when we will stay and grow in STEM professions. And the girls that follow us, they will have more relatable role models and an even brighter future instead of a leaking bucket. Thank you.